And I'm not really sure why Sony haven't done this. Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. My name is Vic Barry. Thanks for tuning our way today. And today I'm going to be talking about the newly announced Sony A6400, which so many people have been waiting for. I think people are expecting an A7000 and, you know, something else in the A7 series, uh, something that can shoot 4K60. Did they get it? No, but they got the A6400, which we're going to take a look at the specs on this. Is the perfect vlogging camera for you? From a content creator, could you use it for photography? We're also going to take a look at some of the downfalls that I personally think it has. And should you really be parting your hard-earned cash with this? So... It's an APS-C camera, it's a 24.2 megapixel camera, and with the APS-C you can use the full range of Sony APS-C lenses, presumably you can use other lenses as well with uh, Metabone converters and so on. You can use full frame lenses with a little bit of work, and this camera is going to give you whatever type of shot that you need because you can get the super fisheye, you can get the super wide angle, you can get a telephoto, you can get whatever you want. So something like the DJ Osmo Pocket, which I'm shooting this video on by the way, doesn't have that option. That's positive number one, that you can swap out the lenses. Number two, you've got the flip up screen, so you can actually see what you're doing, which is a hugely important part of vlogging. However, if you do have a very wide angle on your vlogging camera, then do you need to you know, see what you're doing? With something like a GoPro, you can just hold it up and you know it's wide enough that as long as the camera is somewhere around your face, you're going to be in the shot. However, it is comforting to know how you can frame the shot and you're not relying on the complete autofocus. Is it working? Chances are it will work, but the one shot that you need, it's never in focus, is it? You have got the flip up screen, you've got the mic input as well. So that's always an issue for some of the smaller Sony cameras like the RX100 series, which is an amazing camera. The big downfall of that was there is no mic input. However, the A6400, as you would expect, has a mic input. So from a photography perspective, this is gonna take some pretty decent stills, 24 megapixel camera in this, but we're kind of concentrating more here on the video side of it from the vlogging perspective. So it's a 4K camera, uh, which is 4K 30, may I add. It shoots more or less at 6K. It oversamples the footage it's shooting, and then it downsamples it back to 4K. So basically what that means is you almost have a 6K camera in your hand and you're getting 4K out of it. So the more pixels and the more resolution you can get out of the camera recording, the better it's going to look. So the fact that it's oversampling at 6K and downsampling that overdone to 4K means the quality of this thing is going to be insane from a video perspective. It is going to be incredible. So looking at the video modes, it's 4K 30 and there is no 4K 60, which is would be a kind of an issue for me is it a deal breaker no 4k 60 is really a nice luxury to have if you want some slow-mo then 4k 60 is one way to go and then the thing that's kind of it's almost a you know it balances out the lack of 4k 60 is you have 1080p 120 frames per peter mckinnon so if you want that buttery smooth slow motion you've got it however in the past with other cameras we've seen very low bit rates we've seen huge crops on 1080p slow-mo however on this it's 100 megabits per second so that's the data rate and uh, let me tell you that's pretty substantial so considering a lot of people will render out to a 1080p file anyway this is going to be really really good slow motion so there's some of the huge positives that I see with the A6400. On the downside, and there's always a downside, and I'm not really sure why Sony haven't done this. I still would think it's, they're trying to keep the size of the camera down. They're struggling with the heat as well. There is an option to override the automatic shutdown that the camera has if it gets too hot. I guess you're kind of at your own risk on that. It seems to work quite well on some of the other Sony camera lines that it's, you know, the camera's going to go on fire. Do you want to continue? Yeah, I'll continue. It's fine. Leave it burn. So that's kind of one issue. But, you know, given that they've improved these over the years with firmware updates alone and how the camera dissipates heat, it's not such a big problem. However, the bigger problem for anybody that's thinking about buying the Sony A6400 is the battery life. This is the same battery as the A6300, the A6500. It doesn't have the battery that the A7 III has, which is the Z battery, which has got phenomenal battery life. It's a very big battery, even in size. It's a bulky battery. You know, you got some bang for your buck out of that uh, battery. This one, you're looking at 70 to 75 minutes of 4K footage. Now, 
realistically these are numbers that Sony are providing in the field when you're out and about you might get a little bit more chances are you might get a little bit less as well so what that means is you're probably going to either have to be charging off of a USB power pack or like most people do is you're going to have to invest in some other batteries and unless you go for Sony batteries which are the expensive ones then you might just kind of be running the risk of getting a cheaper uh, third-party battery which you know sometimes you can get great ones and other times you can just get pure rubbish ones so that's the biggest kind of downfall of the a6400 why they haven't put a z battery into this i just really don't know i would have preferred a camera that's slightly bigger that could have taken a far bigger battery now there's lots of new cameras out over the last while so we have the, the gopro hero 7 black we have the dji osmo pocket and now the newly announced sony a6400 the one kind of thing that the Sony has is obviously the interchangeable lenses and Sony really have a decent selection of lenses from huge telephoto right down to something like, you know, a 10 millimeter lens, which is a very, very wide lens. So you've got lots of options for this camera, while if you're on the GoPro Hero 7 or if you're on the Osmo Pocket, you don't have that many options with lenses. Yes, you can get a couple of adapters and stuff like that for the GoPro and you can change the lens ever so slightly, but the GoPro lens is, is super wide anyway. But uh, it is a nice option to have, depending on what kind of stuff you're shooting. Sometimes you might want a super wide shot. Sometimes you just might want to zoom in to get that kind of really insane detail. And you're kind of stuck with the GoPro and you're kind of stuck with the Osmo Pocket from a zoom perspective. You can't really do anything really. Sure, you can zoom in post, but I mean, it's a digital zoom as opposed to an optical one. And of course, if you're using optics, to zoom in, then obviously you're getting the best out of the lens and the best out of the camera as opposed to trying to do what the computer thinks. Speaking of the computer, there's an interesting feature on the A6400 and that is uh, this kind of real-time tracking where it uses artificial intelligence to kind of figure out what's in the scene. Is that a car? Is it a building? Is it a person? So you can dictate what to track and it knows exactly what's kind of going on. There's eye tracking in this as well. So you can select to keep the left or the right eye in focus, which is a great feature only in the photo mode. Um, as far as you know, whether that's something that can update via firmware, who knows, we'll have to wait and see. Is the A6400 the price point here? It's under $1,000 and you'd probably get a lens kit, uh, you know, for under 1300 I think one of the smaller lens kits you can get for like 1100 It's a fairly substantial investment if you're starting out to vlog, but the fact of the matter is that you can swap out the lenses, you can get better glass, you can buy lenses that cost you know way more than the camera and even improve the image quality more so. Should you get it over something like an Osmo Pocket or something like that? For me, right now, the Osmo Pocket is an incredible camera. You, I'm shooting this in it so you can see the quality that we're getting. And I don't know, is there enough in the A6400 for me to just suddenly go and change again? I don't wanna do that because again, you have a camera in the 6400 that it's a very portable camera but at the same time it's not that portable it can't compete with something like a gopro or you know an osmo pocket from the size perspective however that's for you to figure out if you want a small camera that can do lots with plenty of oomph behind it then something like an osmo pocket or a gopro is the camera for you however if you want kind of some phenomenal image quality and again it just goes back to the fact that this thing is kind of capturing footage at 6k resolution and then it's down sampling it to 4k that's some insane picture quality and that's kind of it i mean it's not for me to make up your mind what you should buy it's not for me to tell you but uh, it's certainly a beautiful camera. I think it's priced very, very well. It's mid-level camera. And the option of, of swapping out lenses will probably be a clincher for a lot of people. But it completely depends on what you want to create. If you want to, you know, create some amazing cinematic stuff, you can do that with any camera. I mean, look, the most important thing to remember here, it's not the camera that makes an amazing piece of content. It's the person who presses record is responsible for creating the content. The camera only does it what you tell it to. It only operates within the parameters that you tell it to. Fact is with the Sony a6400, there's a couple of extra bells and whistles that you can utilize, but there's a lot of people out there will buy this camera and they won't utilize all of those features. They may never look at 120 frames per second. They may never swap out a lens. They might just want a camera because it's the newest and greatest thing. So it's very important to kind of weigh up the facts and go, that this is the new camera for me or maybe it's not do you hang on 
and see what happens with the next Sony camera. Apparently there's going to be another one announced in the next couple of weeks, which will be something a little bit more high end. Is it an A7000? Will there be another Sony camera that does 4K60? Will there be another Sony camera that doesn't chew through batteries? So that's, I mean, the battery thing is going to be a, a deal breaker, I think, for a lot of people. 70, 75 minutes, from my experience, is plenty. But when it comes down to it, when you need that extra few minutes for that extra shot that you just, oh, I need this shot. If you haven't got it in the, in, in the can, you're out of juice, then you're kind of screwed. So that's something to keep in mind. No matter what camera you have, you're always going to face issues with uh, battery life. There is no perfect battery, although the Sony A7 III, that Z battery, that's got some serious oomph to it. The Panasonic GH5, that's got some serious uh, weight to the battery as well. But uh, yeah, so that's my take on the A6400. Just want to get it in there because we do a lot of vlogging content here and people are always interested in cameras. And is this a great camera? You know, ultimately all I'm going to say again is it's not the camera that makes it great. It's you. My name is Vic. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, There's a subscribe button around there. Subscribe if you found this video informative, if you found it useful, if you found it useless, then don't subscribe. But thank you for your time anyway. We'll see you in the next episode of the vlog. And until then, don't stop fighting for yourself.